right, 10 a.m. in here finishing up the kitchen. And you see that nice little design where we put a shelf? Well, today I'm going to be doing that nice little design up here. So this is my little stencil. Taped it down. I'm going to put one there, one here, and one over there. So that it'll match. It looks like it's part of the stove. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that with my stencil brush is right here, okay? And then I have my paint, which is right here, is what I used um, before. These are nice because you can go to Home Depot on those and they will mix you a little batch and that's the color that you see on top. This is the color that I'm going to be using. It matches um, this wall over here. I thought I would bring it over and put it there. And that's what I'm going to do up there. So I can't hold the camera and try to do this at the same time. So I'm going to see if I can put the camera on at another angle, put it on and get it back. on top of the refrigerator here if it'll stand still um, well enough for you to see how I'm going to do that right there. And come over here and shake this first. And it, while I'm doing this, I'm going to hold certain parts of it down. And this way the stencil will be flat. This a pretty quick a stencil brush. Just some paint in here. I'm going to start up here in this corner. Just grab it like this. Don't be afraid to be creative and just go for it. Sometimes I think if you're a little too careful, it doesn't come out as good as you would have hoped. But keep putting a little bit more paint. And you can get these like at Michael's or any craft store. And instead of just painting it, see how quick and easy it is? Just do that. A brush full of paint on each side should be sufficient. And then we'll let it sit for like, I don't let it sit too long. And we'll pull it off and see if we like it. The nice thing about this, if we don't like it, we can always paint over this again because this is a semi-gloss and I like to have semi-gloss inside the kitchen. Easy to wipe down, especially because this is the stove area, grease kind of collects. And then we just carefully lift the edges. Um, I like to use painter's tape because it doesn't pull off the tape and it's easier to come off like that. So there you go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clean this, wipe it down, especially on the back. And I'm going to put the next stencil right here so that it'll look like that. I'll probably turn it up like that. And then put the next one over here and turn it down just like that so the fatter side is down here and this side is facing up. And that will probably look pretty cool. If you want to outline this, you know, make like a green frame or something, you can. I'm just going to leave it so it kind of blends in with uh, the stove. But I'll come back to this and show you again how I'm going to tape it up after I wash it down. Oh. 
Okay, I put this one up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this again, making sure my little camera right where it needs to be. Just move it over real quick. paint on my dabbing brush. Kind of like to hold down the end to make sure to get it right in high. I don't necessarily put two coats. I just do the one. One's enough. Because I feel like if you put more than two coats, it starts to bleed through and you start to like get underneath the stencil and you don't want to do that because then it won't come out like the way you want it. So a little bit more paint. This is a quick easy little, you know, fix. Um, I could add a character to these bubble homes. I always add something different. And then I'm going to take this off again. And I am going to move it over here. See how we had the back part here and the back part facing down? Well, I'm going to flip this and put it right there. So I'm going to come back to this. Let's take it down. Make sure I don't have any paint on my fingers when I do this. I did bring some white paint in case I didn't like it. Especially if you see a little bit of paint like that underneath there, you can come back with the white paint. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to wipe the back side of this off, so when I put it back up here, it's not going to smudge, and I'll be right back. Let's angle this a little bit more, so you can see the last part of it over here. And I'm going to flip it and kind of look at it, see where I want to put it as far as facing goes. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's see, I'll put this up temporary and see what it looks like from back here. Um, I tried to keep this little one right in between here, but I looks pretty close. I'm not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to take it down and I'm going to come back. Hold this down a little bit. I don't touch the white, but like I said, if I do, that's okay. I brought my white, that my gloss paint. Uh, try not to put too much on the brush. Because a little bit of this paint will go a long way because you're dabbing it on here. A little bit more. Be done. Once it dries, see, I didn't hold that down. Got ahead of myself. But once this dries, I'm going to show you. I typically, because we are in the kitchen, I'll put um, a spray shellac over it. So it'll be easy to clean, even though this is like a satin as well, kind of shiny. It can clean, but I like a double protection. So that design can always stay up there. The nice thing about these paints, a little bit of soap and water, easy to clean. Now, let's take this down. See what this looks like. Ta-da! Just a little couple of spots. It might need 
needs to be wiped off. This is why I sent my bag, because if I can catch it ahead of time, I don't have to worry about coming back and painting this white. It's just an easy clean. It comes off really easy. But make sure you have a clean towel. This is clean. It looks dirty from many months of use. But I always, always bring a towel, a couple of towels with me, paper towel, toilet paper, you name it. You never know where you're going to be. And it seems like as soon as I get to my dog, I have to go to the bathroom. Or I spill something. Or I see something that needs to be wiped. But, that's it. And as long as this video was, that's how long it took. Let's kind of skip back a little bit see what it looks like but isn't that cute so this back here what I did and I'm gonna be caulking everything is I put a frame around it and yes you can see some of the finishing nails but I'm gonna put some caulking in here clean it up down at the bottom down here a waterproof caulking white um, I did put some silicone on the back of these so it'll stick to the wall in case the nails do pop out. Um, not a lot because if you remember in an earlier video we showed you that whoever did this house before behind this panel if we ever need to get to an electrical outlet and we utilize that for this um, hood vent for this hood that if we ever need to get to it, we can pop this off and that's why I left the screws in there. Usually I put some glue behind here, like liquid nails, so this will be up here. But this is all plastic, so it'll be easy to wash. And this is not wood either. This is plastic, this strip. So everything I think about, it has to be waterproofed. I have to get a light bulb in here. I forgot to bring one today. But at least now when you come into the kitchen, you see something little cute up there, shelving over there. Uh, the reason why we put the shelving is because that whole section there had some cabinets all the way to the end of the counter. But we had to replace the ceiling panel because uh, there was a leak. It affected a huge um, rectangular light they had hanging up there. And so I thought, you know, instead of running all over town trying to find these cabinets, Let's just, you know, put a little shelf up there. And then frame it out so that it's the same color as the frame on the door. And all we did was just get some pine wood. It had some grooves in it, which was pretty, and I just stained it. And that's all, you know, around the mobile door. It gives it um, a nice character. So now I get to push this stove back after I caulk everything and um, I'll cover the hood vent and I'll put some of this stuff um, water seal waterproofing wood protector that'll work I had a couple of bottles of those so that's clear and I'll just spray that down up there so that um, it'll be there for a long time this refrigerator unfortunately doesn't work it's going to cost more to fix it so we got to pull it out but when I'm done with the back splash, I'll put the stove back in, take another picture and show you what it looks like. Then I gotta go around here and back in the floors, mop the floors, do some caulking around um, the baseboard. And then that'll be pretty much it. So until the next video, this is what I am up to today. Always good things.